Kia ora and welcome to a very special extended episode of Experience Bar where we're turning video games and today tabletop RPGs into cocktails. My name is Jack, I'm the bartender here, and regular viewers may notice that our set is looking a little different from usual. That's because we're working in collaboration with Auckland-based board game bar and eatery Dyson Fork to bring you this episode. They've got a really great Dungeons & Dragons community that comes here to eat and play, so it feels only right that we should be showing you some D&D potions today. That means I've taken three recipes from our usually Patreon-exclusive recipe book, and I'll be showing you how to make them at home. So we'll be making the Potion of Clairvoyance, the Potion of Gaseous Form, and every adventurer's friend, the Potion of Healing. Let's get started. Great, so for the Potion of Clairvoyance, you will need a shaker filled with ice. One ounce of your preferred gin, you can use one of the ones we've got here, 1919 gin, a great New Zealand gin, or Lighthouse, which is also another good gin. Lighthouse, slightly cleaner, 1919, slightly more characterful. Just use one that you like. One ounce of gin. We're then gonna follow that up with one ounce of apricot brandy. Now remember, there are two different kinds of apricot brandy. There's a sweet one, which is more of an apricot liqueur, so you can use that instead. And then there's brandy literally made from apricots, which is usually 40% and quite dry. Use the sweeter one, not the drier one. Follow it up with one and a half ounces of pineapple juice and half an ounce of lime juice. You know what we're gonna do now? Give it a good shake. Lovely. Now, the vessel that I'm using is ever so slightly too thin-necked to pour it straight from the strainer in without making a mess everywhere, so we're just going to transfer this into uh, a metal jug first. Take a vessel. Uh, again, if you guys are wondering where you get these kinds of things, these are literally just oil and vinegar bottles. Check your local homeware store. And transfer it on in there. There you have it, Potion of Clairvoyance. But that is only the first of our three cocktails today, so let's go on to the Potion of Gaseous Form. For this one, you're going to need, once again, a shaker, filled with ice and one and a half ounces of gin. This time I'm using the Lighthouse. Uh, I recommend a slightly uh, cleaner gin for this one. It's slightly more uh, gin forward than the Potion of Clairvoyance uh, and it matches up a bit nicer with the rest of the ingredients if you do one that's a, a little cleaner. I'm gonna follow up with one ounce of Earl Grey tea, freshly brewed preferably, but it has to be chilled first. So brew it, chuck it in the fridge or freezer and then use it. Don't use it while it's still warm. And half an ounce of simple syrup. If you don't know how to make simple syrup, it's dead easy. Uh, just check it in the description below. I'll leave a little recipe. And half an ounce of lemon juice, lovely. Now, we, you can guess what we're gonna do next. Nice shake. And once again, I've been a bloody idiot and uh, picked a vessel with the narrow, very narrow neck. So we're going to be straining it on into our handy little jug first. There we go. Lovely. Potion of gaseous form. But we've still got one more and I suspect this is the one you guys have all been waiting for. This is the potion of healing next. For this one, you are going to need a shaker filled with ice. Now, this bad boy does have quite a few ingredients with it, so try to keep up. We're gonna need one ounce of white rum. I'm using stolen white rum, which as you might have guessed from the themes throughout this, we is a, uh, a New Zealand rum. We're gonna follow that up with a mm, half an ounce of coconut rum. We're using Malibu, but use any coconut rum that you like. Half an ounce of lemon juice and one and a half ounces each of orange juice and cranberry juice. Now your shaker is gonna be pretty full because we're playing with a lot of ingredients here, but do not worry, it will not splatter, hopefully. The milk jug returns. Take your vessel. Again, this I just found at a charity shop, so don't uh, write them off. They can have some pretty cool stuff in them. 
And I suspect a lot of you are thinking to yourselves right now, oh, that's more pink. I want it nice and bright and red. I agree with you, but we're gonna make this extra red in just a moment. Leave a little space, because we're gonna add the optional sixth ingredient, which is our raspberry cordial. This will affect the flavor ever so slightly because it is concentrated, but it won't spoil the flavor and it will give it a little bit of extra red if you need it. There we go, give it a quick mix around. Last thing we're going to do is uh, take some luster dust. You can find this in baking stores or baking sections of homeware stores. This is a edible glitter dust, essentially, that people use to paint on fondant petals and similar. We're just gonna get a little bit of that and just dump it on in. And you'll see in the close-ups why we're doing this. And swirly, swirly, swirly to get that glitter dust nice and moving. There we go. And there you have it. The potion of healing, the third and final in our D&D cocktails for today, uh, along with the potion of gaseous form and the potion of clairvoyance. But to be honest, I've had enough about talking about them. Let's get to drinking them for that. Set over here. And here we are at the tasting table with three, well, six technically beautiful cocktails in front of us because I have with me uh, Hayden, uh, the founder uh, and owner of Dice and Fork. Thanks for having us, Hayden. You're welcome, thank you for coming. So, tell me a bit about Dyson Fork. What, what made you decide to open a board game eatery? Yeah, so uh, my wife and I, we wanted to, we were just starting to get into board games and we wanted to kind of find a place where we could come and, and play board games and there wasn't that many around in Auckland. So um, there's you know, traditional bars and stuff like that, mm. um, but sometimes lighting there or sometimes you'll get weird looks. So we decided to start our own place. Um, we wanted to have good food, good, uh, alcohol and uh, we wanted to have games to, to play. How many, how many board games do you actually have here? I mean, you've got quite a few of them. Yeah, we have just over 200 board games here and wow. the collection is growing pretty much every week. Uh, we're sort of adding more. And on that note, uh, one of the communities that has kind of regularly returns to Dyson Fork and has kind of become a, a concrete part of the place is, is the Dungeons and Dragons community, the players that you get here. Um, how often do you find people coming here to play like tabletop RPGs? Not necessarily D&D, &D, but just tape TTRPGs in general. Yeah, um, quite often actually. There's people always come in and, and playing them. Um, some of the new RPGs I haven't even seen yet. Mm. Um, Dungeons & Dragons is definitely the most popular one. Um, yeah, they come in They come in all the time. It's, it's really cool because um, there's been meetups where here where people have uh, they've been coming to learn D&D. Mm. &D. Um, so people have been holding meetups and, and they come in here and they learn. And it's really good to see people, they, they get their first character sheet, they start making their character and they really yeah. get into it and you see something click yeah. um, and you can tell they're going to be hooked and, and, and they're, they're, they're into it as well, which is really good to see um, more and more people getting involved in, in Dungeons and & Dragons. And, and on that note, we do have three uh, cocktails of, uh, inspired by D&D &D in front of us, so I guess now we'll get into drinking them now that we've gone through all the trouble of making them. Sounds good. <laughs> First one we got. Uh, this yellow one is the potion of clairvoyance. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, right. What do you reckon? That's very good. You like that one? Um, yeah, really. Like I like the sweet from the pineapple, mm -hmm. um, and the gin really, really holds it off. The um, the, the for, for players of D and D will know that the potion of clairvoyance is a very useful potion. Uh, it's described as a yellowish potion so when I was trying to recreate this it was that was kind of my starting point was it needs to be yellow so pineapple came in there but I kind of decided with a potion of clairvoyance it's almost wizardy and I don't know wizards are kind of kind of always about gin for me so I kind of made this weird tropical drink that has gin in it rather than rum it's a little bit sour as well but if you like gin and juice this is kind of the upgraded version of that I would suppose the next one is the potion of gaseous form Cheers. Wow, oh, that's really nice. Yeah, so you'll be getting uh, the tea in there. Again, another gin drink um, with lemon instead of lime. But in the game, the potion of gaseous form is described as kind of fog, like liquid fog in a bottle that you can pour out. It turns you into like a gaseous form, lets you slip through bars and steal stuff and get, get to places. But um, trying to make a gray, foggy drink 
it's not easy and it doesn't taste good, doesn't look good, doesn't taste good. So instead we went with tea from Foggy London. I know it's a bit thematically of a stretch, but yeah, that's, that's the inspiration behind it. And last of all, the one that I think most people will be here to watch is the Potion of Healing. Cheers. Oh, cheers. That's nice. Yeah. That's the one I think a lot of people will like the most of these. I could three. drink a lot of that, yeah. It's very sweet. It is very sweet, but it's slightly lower in alcohol than these other two. Right. Because I made this with the intent of when you're playing D&D and your character inevitably has to drink a potion, you make your players drink the potion right. as well. So you don't want your players getting too smashed. <laughs> no. You want them a little bit jolly, but yep. you don't want them falling off the table because that's no fun. Um, so this one's slightly lower in alcohol, designed to be drank by a lot of a lot of people meant to have a wide appealing base. And you know, bright red sparkly stuff. It's yeah, it looks really stuff. cool with the Yeah, yeah, that's a really, really good opportunity to use that, that luster dust stuff. So those are the uh, three cocktails that we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Hayden, for having us once again. Thank you. Um, I believe if you want to uh, get an idea of what these cocktails taste like for yourself, uh, Dyson Fork are gonna be trying to get one of these onto their October menu. Um, so if you are in Auckland and you haven't been to Dyson Fork yet, or you haven't been for a while, this is an excellent excuse to come on down and try one of the experienced bar drinks. These are three of the 11 that we have on our recipe book, exclusive to patrons, so if you want Want to see more of them head over to our patreon it'll be cool and there's lots of other recipe books maybe coming depending on how well we do uh, if you'd like to see more of us uh, subscribe to us on youtube head over to our twitter or our instagram or our facebook for some extra stuff including some outtakes um, we have a subreddit set up and a discord if you want to play with the crew uh, dyson fork also has its own socials if you want to keep up with new events and announcements head over to their facebook that's the best place to get them uh, but in the meantime we are creating new content every couple of weeks or so hope you guys have enjoyed yourself as much as we have. See you next time.